Space, the final frontier. My name is Captain Foley, and these are my adventures. Captain's Log, start date 2015 Hi guys, um, it's been a little while since my last Captain's Log, and I wasn't planning on making one today, but I thought I might as well because you guys probably miss me. No, I hear crickets. No. Um, so let's just get straight into the uh, comments and questions from the last Captain's Log, shall we? Okay. Oh man. All right. So the first one is from SFB Attic. So Starfleet Battles Attic. Uh, this this is in talking about the Starfleet Battles Galactic Survey Cruiser that I kind of mentioned in the last in two of my captain's logs and my brother kind of elaborated on in the last one, and he's just kind of correcting me with all the stats and stuff here. So, so it has two photon torpedoes, not four. Six Phaser ones, four three, four Phaser threes, which are three hundred and sixty degree phasers, three drone racks, four sensors which are destroyed on phaser hits. And those are the sensors that are around the saucer of the ship. Two probe launchers, has extra cargo storage not seen on regular cruisers, has a larger battery bank, six batteries, not four, uh, has two fighters for wartime deployment in the shuttle bay, and has improved sensor scanner and damage control abilities. So there you have it, guys. Next one is from NC1701 Dan. Um, well, actually, sorry, Film Monk Productions. Um, talking about my, ref I referred to Foster's beer in the last Captain's Log, talking about Australia. He's like, LOL, Foster's? Foster's? I don't know where you Americans get your info, but we don't drink that at all. LOL, come down to Australia at any time, mate. So different, but the same as the States. Well, I'm not in the States, I'm in Canada. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm better. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding, no, don't, no, everybody's gonna blow up on me now. I'm like British light, uh, you know. Anyway, so I said, LOL, I'm from Canada actually, and the Foster's beer thing is from the 80s, back when Crocodile Dundee was a big deal, LOL. Remember those old Foster's commercials? Um, how did it go? I can't even remember now. Foster's, the beer down under or something. Anyway. So he replies back, LOL, I'm so sorry then. Shame on me. I should have known better. My bad. <laughs> and then NC1701 Dan chimes in and says, LOL, I know, right? I cracked up at the Foster's bit. Well, I'm glad I can make people laugh. This isn't really a comedy show, but if you guys can laugh at me, you wouldn't be the first. And you won't be the last. And then CCS4646 chimed in on the whole uh, comment and said, can we see the unedited bloopers video? Yes, someday. Um, me and Samuel have a ton of bloopers and they're funny, funny, funny. And we have some with our special guests as well. I would love to make a bloopers video for you guys. Uh, it takes a lot of time though, because we have to go back through all the footage and cut out those pieces and re-edit it together. So it's Samuel's uh, thing. So you guys have to chime in and yell at Samuel, 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 we want bloopers. And then, you know, if we get enough requests, we'll definitely do it. But it was something we've always planned on doing, uh, maybe as a special Christmas gift in, in December or uh, our one year anniversary uh, when we started Trek Yards is coming up in October, maybe something for that. Maybe we got a lot of cool stuff coming up, by the way, because um, of the convention that we had a Trek Yards booth at in London, England. Uh, that Samuel was manning. A lot of cool stuff coming out of that, so stay tuned for that, guys. I haven't even been informed of everything that, that happened, so I'm still waiting to hear from Samuel, but definitely uh, keep checking back, because there's a lot of cool stuff coming up between now and October. Might be some guest stars, even. Some special guest interviews he did. I don't know. I don't know. All right, so the next question is Chris Tom. What screensavers are those? Well, like I said in a past Captain's Log, they're just screensavers I've collected over the years. A lot of them are flash animations that I've converted to screensavers. Um, some of them are just YouTube videos that I have on a loop, so they're not really anything specific, so sorry. 
Next question is from Sackwist. Stuart, I have two NVIDIA 580 GTX graphic cards. Do you think Samuel could use them? I don't know. Samuel? Commander? Could you use them? I'm sure he could. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure he'll respond to this and let me know, and then I can let you know in the next Captain's Log, perhaps. Um, next is from B. Bizano one uh, I agree with you. The whole General Lee Confederate flight thing is BS. I really enjoy all awesome things you do in regards to Star Trek ships and etc. I recently got back into model making. I use your info all the time for paint choices and ex and stuff and etc. He says, sorry. Well, that's good. I'm glad that my model videos are actually, you know, helping somebody out. I mean, I started the channel with those. So that's what the channel was all about initially and I'm, I'm still doing it I'm working on my 350 refit which I haven't touched in a long time which I'm gonna get back into so there's still a lot more model tips and stuff coming your way so just stay tuned guys um, but thank you I'm glad you're using the information and it's helping somebody out um, <clears throat> blah, blah. I do have a quick question for you other than Captain Christopher Pike has there any been a ever been a Starfleet officer with a disability. I'm curious because I have cerebral palsy and if it wasn't for the TOS uh, when I was growing up, well let's just say it kind of gave me hope for the future. That's for all, thanks for all the effort and keep up the great work. Bill Bizano. Well Bill, um, I know there was a character on Deep Space Nine who was disabled, had problems with her legs and she had to be in a zero gravity environment. Um, or wear braces on her legs. So, yeah, that's all I can really think of offhand. But I'm sure there's other... Like, they should have... Well, Jordy was disabled. He was blind. So, yeah, there's disabilities in Star Trek. Even even me. I'm allergic to retin X5. Not really disability, but, you know, need the glasses. So does Kirk. So the next one is from... B.S. Dandrum 27. LOL. LOL. B.S. Dandrum. Because <laughs> I think I said it funny in the last step, last one. Uh, I'm Dan Scott on Facebook. Would like to see uh, Trek Yards on the ship designs from Pacific 201, much like you did with the Axnar and the Ares. And Samuel chimed in and said, as would I. As would I. It's a great looking ship, and they've got some cool... Um, extra stuff like the shuttles are very neat and they've been posted on Trek Yard so check it out the uh, Pacific 201 you can even look it up on YouTube and uh, they got a really cool ship design and it's gonna be a great fan movie he has actually talked spoke to me um, quite a while ago about featuring his ship in a Trek Yard's original so you never know it could be coming down the line eventually uh, we have no real solid plans for that right now but which is definitely on our radar, guys. NC1701 Dan, again. Australians still love you. Aw. Thank you. Cars are awesome, too. I'm more of an Audi BMW guy myself. But I, would decline, I wouldn't decline driving a Lamborghini. It was really good to see the Argo and Nemesis as it's somewhat a callback to past automobiles. I've got a few things to talk about here. Audi does, in fact, own Lamborghini right now, and I'm not a huge fan of the Lamborghini Gallardo. It's kind of the cheap man's Lamborghini. It's a 10-cylinder. It doesn't have the Lamborghini scissor doors, so, eh. I'd rather drive a top-of-the-line Audi R8 than the bottom-line uh, Lamborghini, which is the Gallardo. Well, was the Gallardo. Now it's the Huracan. Um, and the Huracan's a huge improvement over the Gallardo, but it's still, you know, it doesn't have the scissor doors. It doesn't have the classic Lamborghini feel, so... That's the first thing I wanted to talk about there. Uh, second, about the Argo. Did you know that... I don't know for a fact, but I think the Argo was named after the incident in the 70s where there was the science fiction film Argo being made where the Canadians, uh, Canadian embassy helped the hostages get out of uh, Iran, I believe it was. But yeah, the movie Argo with uh, um, Batman. Can't think of his name offhand. Oh my god. <sighs> anyway, yeah. I'm pretty sure the Argo in the in Nemesis was named after uh, for that science fiction movie. A lot of people were looking forward to that science fiction movie, which was a fake science fiction movie, just so they could get in there and get those guys out. So, interesting little fact. Uh, next one is from Stackwist again. 
Stuart, I am a card-carrying Oreo. Uh, trust me, black people in general don't care about the Confederate flag, and frankly, turning these problems... And quite frankly, turning these people's deaths as a means for which to hunt for symbols taints their memory, and I would imagine takes away from the true wrong that was done. Don't worry about this. It's idiocy, and it's really not worth mentioning. Agreed, but the General Lee thing really grinds my gears, as Peter Griffin would say. So we got a few more comments about the General Lee from my last video. So Robert Monroe says, I agree. Support the General Lee. The battle flag of the South, as it was known in the Civil War, was not directly intended as a racist symbol, but as a banner for rebellion. They went into war over their convictions to defend their way of life, however skewered their views were. The flag was then a symbol of rebelling against the man, sticking it to the law of the land and doing what you want, when you want, how you want. Now look at them Duke boys. Dirt road racers who run moonshine across the county line, Uncle Jesse, the patriarch of the Duke family, the guy who cooks up the shine and has, a and has been the nemesis to the corrupt local tycoon boss hog and his lapdog enforcer, Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane, uh, for years. It was a car used to stick it to the man and was a symbol of rebellion against the establishment. They weren't racist. They were just a group of moonshining rednecks sticking it to the man. If you agree, feel free to like, comment, and stick it to the man. If you disagree, feel, and then it's dot, dot, dot. I can't load up the rest of the comment. If there is more, I believe there is. But I think it probably said if you disagree, feel free to piss off. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Robert Monroe, please comment with the, if you disagree, feel, and then just let me know what the rest was supposed to be. Because I'm really curious. But I have a feeling it's something along the way I feel about things. So, uh, Next is from Radical Edward, also Kenia Caria, or Michael Gardner. I agree with you on the fact that the Confederate battle flag is not racist. Thank you. It's actually not even the right flag for what they're saying it stands for, but that's another issue. Ashley Bunker, one of our biggest Trek Yards uh, fans. Excellent, as always. Agree with waiting for the anniversary for the iconic ships. Look forward to mission, br mission briefings on them. Also enjoyed the Google Hangout. Hopefully be able to stay for the whole thing next time. Um, the General Lee rocks, and it's silly about all the crap about it. We have a similar thing when it comes to our silent... Or St. George flag. Oh, my God. I can't even read today. St. George's flag. Uh, he's from England, of course, much like Samuel. They're actually like an hour away from each other, so... Yeah. Just thought I'd point that out. And the cap, captain's cap rocks. Here's referring to my captain's hat that my buddy Noel gave me. It'll be seen in a few videos. Fear not. I think you should release the Trekyard's blooper reel. Again, yes, we plan on it eventually, sometime, maybe. And finally, the nacelles thing, I agree with you. I don't know what nacelles thing he's referring to specifically. I forget. I'd have to watch my old captain's log. I feel stupid now. But as long as you're agreeing with me, that's cool. Just need to pause this for one second. I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to take a message from my first officer, Commander Cockings. He's uploaded a video that I have to go check out and make sure that it's all right reviewing but anyway i apologize for having to cut you guys off but i'm back okay um next one is from daniel collins those car videos were cool on my list to try out if i end up in las vegas someday also found your old model building videos so i'll put them to good use when i get back to my trek kits good i'm glad and like i said there's going to be a lot more model videos coming up and i'm glad you enjoyed the car videos if you haven't checked out my me driving a Lamborghini Aventador or an Austin Martin Vantage, please go check them out. There were some of my older videos. There's a playlist called Exotics Racing in Las Vegas. Check it out. Next is from Michael Lohr. Amen about the General Lee Dodge Charger from Dukes of Hazard. I agree. That is some bullshit. Thank you, Michael, for agreeing with me. Next is from Kevin Clarkson. You learned to drive from the Dukes? Wait, is that why your Camaro has been in storage for so long? You jump one too many rivers, lol. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, but it's because I was a responsible young man and I had a family and children. I couldn't really afford the insurance or the gas because it needs high octane gasoline and that's expensive. 
But now that I'm older and the kids are older, got it out of storage, working on it, got to get the carburetor rebuilt right now and the starter motor should be up and running hopefully within a month. We'll see. Don't have a lot of time to work on it. You know, I got to keep you people happy with Trek yards. But that's okay. I'll keep you posted on the Camaro situation. And once it's viewable by the public, <laughs> I mean, you can see pictures of it on my Facebook. Uh, I've posted quite a few pictures of it. It's a beautiful car. It looks great. But once it's running, I'll do a video on it and take it for a drive. All right. Anyway, he goes on to say, it's Clevin Car Kevin Clarkson still. I like the idea of different formats for the shows, but I've had an idea. I get a UK motoring magazine called Autocar, and they do a special Xmas road test every year, which is off topic. Instead of a road, instead of road testing a car, they road test a boat or something. How about a special occasions? How about for special occasions, do a special Trek yard show on a non-Star Trek vessel? I would love to see you guys do an Imperial Star Destroyer, Battlestar Galactica, or my personal non-favorite Trek vessel, Excalibur. That's a freaking great idea, and I love it. Um, I've always thought about maybe doing something on Star Wars ships, but we, you know, what would we call it? Wars Yards? Uh, and we've discussed doing something on Stargate ships called Gate Yards, because um, Samuel's a huge Stargate fan. I'm eh, mildly Star Stargate fan, but we've discussed the Gate Yards uh, show format. It might be something we consider, but I really like that idea of just having a special one that's just a one-off ship like you know the X-Wing or the Millennium Falcon I think that's a great idea I, I love that idea Samuel we gotta put that on our checklist our to-do list which is like 15 pages long by now because we got a lot of stuff in the works for you guys so but no excellent suggestion thank you very much for that and we'll definitely consider that now Star Starfleet Battles Addict again uh, says SJWs are a plague on humanity what are SJ? I don't know what SJWs are. Maybe I'm just stupid. But if you could let me know, that'd be awesome. SJWs. I have a few ideas, but I don't want to say them and insult anybody. Moving along. Michael Lore. This is the last one. Are there any more Trek yards planned with Doug Drexler? And my trusty Commander Cockings had to comment on it in my comment feed here so he said we managed to film another two-parter before he went back to work on defiance and became too busy hopefully near the end of the year we can film more with him this is true um doug director is going to be available between september and january generally is when he's on vacation and he's available like all the time to film but yes we do have another one uh two-parter that's that's filmed and ready to go and it'll be released sometime soon ish i don't know but yeah don't worry there's more doug director coming up uh, he loves us. He loves hanging out with us. And yeah, we definitely got a lot of stuff planned with him. So stay tuned, guys. Hmm. Computer problems. One moment. Sorry about that. This is... I could edit all this out, but I figure, you know, it's kind of like a peek into my life sitting at my desk I always get problems and messages come in and stuff I mean if you want me to edit it out let me know otherwise just tell me that I'm doing a good job and that you want to see more of kind of behind the scenes stuff because all this stuff going on it's like removing a pesky little problem I had right now so anyway a couple more things I wanted to speak about um, I'm kind of getting sick and tired of people saying Oh, that struts are weak points, and you know, one well placed photon torpedo would destroy them, or uh, one one lucky shot would destroy a bridge of a ship because it's on top of the ship. Understandable, yes, but it's an argument that really annoys me. Ships have shields for reason, for a reason, and I know that, yeah, the bridge is on top of the ship, and it was done because Gene Roddenberry wanted to have a sense of scale. So you put the bridge on the top so you know exactly how big the ship is in relation to the people that are on the bridge, things like that. But I really get sick of hearing the argument. I mean, even if the bridge was in the middle of the saucer, that's still only a few decks down. It's still going to get pulverized by a photon torpedo should it hit there. It, it, and the struts, uh, oh, they're too spindly, they're too small, they don't look right. It goes back to Jug Drexler and the ape brain. Uh, we just can't wrap our heads around the fact that these are advanced starships that have advanced technology and could therefore support 
the weight of the engines well they are in zero g first of all but support the weight and uh whatnot of the engines with smaller struts i mean it's not like the the engines produce thrust it's not like a rocket engine where yeah it would shear off probably with that strut but it no it just warps the fabric of space so it doesn't really create any thrust that's why probably why the impulse engines are tucked nicely where they are the edge of the saucer so it's got all that weight of the saucer to push off uh and so they don't like snap off and like spiral into space so arguments like that on trek the trek yards page really bother me because it keeps coming up over and over and over and over again and people say this is the problem with this specific fan created design or this is the problem with the facet design is why is it like that one well-placed hit well yes one well-placed hit with any ship it's going to cause problems um Every ship, a uh, Klingon ship, you could snap off a st engine strut like that, like the, like the Enterprise did on the Reliant in Star Trek II. Um, you could snap off the neck, the boom that attaches the primary section to the the engineering section. The D the Dideridex, uh one or two well placed shots at the neck, snap the whole head of the thing right off, and just have the rear part. Like every ship design, I mean. It's an argument that really frustrates me, and I know that ships like in Stargate, like uh, the Prometheus, I believe it's called, uh, which O'Neill wanted to name the Enterprise, but he w they wouldn't let him, <laughs> uh, is more a realistic design for a human. Uh, if we if we went into space tomorrow, it'd be more of the design that we would have would look like that, I believe, because uh, it's more militaristic and more stocky and kind of a box. And uh, yes, I understand this, but. We want things to look nice and look elegant, and that Star Trek does that beautifully, and so that argument really gets under my skin. Next thing I want to talk about is kind of in the same vein. I get notifications for every comment on our videos in my email. I realize we're getting bigger, there's a lot more fans following us, but I have like 15 comments from like the same person having a conversation with somebody on our comments board. I don't mind conversations so much as long as they stay ship specific. A lot of times they kind of go off topic and I'm still getting notifications for them and that just drives me up the fucking wall. Um, I think what would be better is to move the comments over to the Trek Yards page. If, you're, if, you, if you really get into it, a YouTube video and you want to talk about the ship that's fine keep it to like keep a conversation between two people in the in the comments thread kind of short please don't go 26 comments long each person because I get notifications for every one of those and I realize I can disable those but I like kind of keeping up on things and usually I only read the first like a uh, sentence or two of it before on my email and then it cuts it off so I don't even really read all of them because there's so many and Samuel and I have been meaning to go through our older videos and to go through the comments and read each one and kind of comment and you know maybe get rid of some that are totally irrelevant uh, we've been meaning to do that but we're very busy and one day we might get might get to it might do like four or five at a time four or five videos at a time but until then try to keep those conversations to a minimum if you could I mean, point out things that you know about the ship that we may not have covered um, that other fans might want to know about that you can put in the comments so that when they watch the video they can um, read your comment and learn a little bit more about you know something that we might not have covered. And keep in mind, please, that the mission briefings are just that. They're just us looking at pictures just chatting about the ship. It's not a full-blown Trek Yards episode where we cover every aspect of the ship like we would do in a regular Trek Yards episode. Those episodes, those ships will be done eventually. Now they're just mission briefings. They're just to get the ship out there so you guys can hear some talk about it uh, and get some, some of the Trek Yards treatment, so to speak. And they're just fan favorites. I think that's it. Um, <laughs> I've, I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover. There's probably a few other things that I didn't jot down um, that I'd like to mention, but to be honest, I can't think of them. Um, all I can say is stay tuned because with the convention appearance that we just had, the booth we had, there's some really exciting stuff coming, some special guests, some special interviews. Uh, so we might have three releases a week 
for a little while. Um, I'm Richard Briefing, a special live Trek Yards on location interview, and uh, then our regular Trek Yards shows on Saturday. So stay tuned for that. Um, I, other than that, I know I say I'm a lot. I've watched my videos. I've watched Trek Yards videos. Samuel's mentioned it tries to edit out some of my ums, 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 ums. I know I do it a lot, and I apologize, um, but that's just the way it is. <laughs> I don't even realize I'm doing it half the time, so I almost put one in right there. Uh, okay, I almost said it on there, too, without even thinking. It's just the way I am. Sorry. Uh, okay, uh, I did it there again, too. Oh, my God. Hmm. Uh, okay, I did it there again, too. I'm going to stop now because it's really getting irritating. But hope you guys have enjoyed the Sean Turinjo, uh pictures that he did for us, uh, Samuel and I. And somebody made up one, Captain Foley for President, <laughs> which I shared. And all of a sudden, you know, people were like, oh, an ego. I don't have an ego. I was just sharing something that somebody created, which was I thought was funny, uh, considering would you rather vote for Donald Trump or for me? I'd say I'm a lot. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> so, and then my uh, one of our special guest stars, Josh Spencer, actually made one that said uh, Captain Foley for Federation President, which I kind of liked a little bit better. So, thank you, Josh, for that. But, okay, well, I think that's it for now. I, I know I'm going to end this video, and I'm going to start editing it, and I'm going to realize that there's something I wanted to say, but I can't think of what it is right now, so I'll jot it down and mention it in the next one. Because every, every week, or every Captain's Log, I have a Captain's Log. Things I want to talk about. I jot them down. It's on my desk all the time. When I think of something, I come down, I write it down, and then I can chat to you guys about it. So... It'll come to me. It probably wasn't important. Or as my parents would say when I was younger, well, if you forgot it, then it must have been a lie. Or it wasn't important, so... Meh. Okay, guys, I will talk to you all very, very, very soon. And I hope you guys have enjoyed all of our latest releases. We have some cool ones coming up. We got John Eves. Ha ha! Part one of the John Eves Enterprise B has been released. Part two will be released soon. And we have more with John Eves on the way. So we finally got the elusive John Eves. So we are looking good that way. We have a few more guest stars that we haven't really uh, arranged the time to film with them yet. But there's a few more that are coming down the pipe that you guys don't know about. So stay tuned for that. And I look forward to talking to you guys again very soon. This is Captain Foley signing off. Until next time. Bye, guys. Trek on. Or Trek off. Speaking of Trek off, Samuel and I were on a podcast called Trek off. Check it out. Trek off, and the episode is called Trek Yards and Real Life Replicators or Replicators for Real. So, if you were a fan of the podcast Trek Off, check it out because we are on there. It was a few months ago, and it's worth listening to. And the interview with us doesn't start till like 33 minutes in, but it's definitely worth checking out. I've posted the link on the Trek Yards page so. Or just go to the podcast, check off, and look for the episode. All right. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.